Tony's in there under uh, attendees. Oh, okay. Where is he? Oh, I got it. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. Today is June 27th, 2022. This is the regular uh, meeting of the Mayor and Common Council for our Flemington. We do have an executive session this evening. It's regarding a property acquisition and negotiations related to property acquisition. No action will be taken on that executive session this evening. Um, Sally, if you'd call the roll. Mayor Driver. Here. Ms. Han. Here. Mr. Johnston. Here. Mr. Long. Here. Mr. Parker. You muted. Here. Ms. Rosetti? Here. Ms. Tilly? Here. And this meeting is being called pursuant to the provisions of the open public meetings law. Meeting in June 27, 2022 was included in a list of meetings notice. Sent to the Hundred and County Democrat and Courier News on June, January 5th, 2022. Posted on the bulletin board at Borough Hall on that date and has remained continuously posted as required. In addition, a copy of this notice is and has been available to the public and is on file in the office of the borough clerk. Uh, if we could have a motion to enter into executive session on resolution 2022-149, entering into executive session for the purpose of discussing possible negotiations on land acquisition. No action will be taken. Until the will a second. Okay, Ms. Hand? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. All right, we're gonna go in the next session. Lock the meeting, pause the recording. <laughs> Um, good evening. Today is June 27, 2022. This is the work session of the Mayor and Common Council, Borough of Flemington. Uh, this meeting is being called pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Law. This meeting of June 27, 2022 was included in the list of meetings notice sent to the Huntington County Democrat and Courier News on January 5, 2022. Posted on the bulletin board at Borough Hall on that date and has remained continuously posted as required. In addition, a copy of this notice is and has been available to the public and is on file in the office of the borough clerk. Uh, we do have a work session this evening. Uh, we have representatives from the American Jewish Committee's New Jersey region. We have Dina Dubofsky, who's the assistant director. We have Rabbi David Levy, who is the director of the New Jersey Regional AJC. And we have Jonathan Nemeth from the AJC as well, who will be talking to us about a rise in anti-Semitism around the country and in New Jersey as well. Before we begin, Sally, could you take the roll, please? Sure. Uh, Mayor Driver? Here. Ms. Hand? Here. Mr. Johnston? Here. Mr. Long? Here. Mr. Parker? Here. Ms. Rossetti? Here. Ms. Tilly? Here. Okay. Excellent. Rabbi, the floor is yours. Thank you. And, um, Thank you, Mayor Driver and the council for inviting us here today. Um, we're here from American Jewish Committee, as you said, uh, to talk to you about uh, concerns we have of rising anti-Semitism, not just across the country, but um, here in New Jersey. And it's, before I begin, I have to say that to speak about anti-Semitism is to speak about really what has become a template for hate in our, in our world. Um, many of us, all of us should uh, remember recently the. Sure. Thank you. All of us should remember recently the shooting in Buffalo at the top supermarket, which um, led to the death of ten people because they were African American, because they were black. Uh, the perpetrator actually um, engaged in that horrific event 
driven by a conspiracy theory that's an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, something called replacement theory, where he believed that Jews were in a conspiracy to replace white America with people of color. And um, he was driven to hate blacks by an initial hatred of Jews. So it's, it's a concern that all of us in society need to focus on. Just to quickly let you know what AJ, who AJC is, American Jewish Committee is the oldest global advocacy organization in the United States. Um, we work to enhance the well being of the Jewish people and Israel and people all around the world and to uh, advance small d democratic values and freedoms for all people around the world. We have 24 offices in the United States, ours in New Jersey is one of them, 13 around the world, 37 international partnerships, and we work together to fight anti Semitism and extremism. We work together to support Israel's place in the world, and we work together to support the freedoms and values of all people, the ones that we enjoy in the US, all around the world. So a few sadly sobering statistics. Uh, we know from our, we at American Jewish Committee have done surveys the last three years, uh, ever since the shootings in Pittsburgh, surveys of the American Jewish community and the general American community on attitudes towards anti-Semitism. We know that one in four American Jews reports that they have been the victim of an, of an anti-Semitic act over the last 12 months, whether that be verbal, physical, emotional, they are report, Jews around, around America are reporting having been uh, victims of anti-Semitism. According to the FBI, in fact, nearly 60% of all religious-based bias crimes are against Jews, even though Jews only make 2% of the population. The next, just to give you a sense, the religious group that is the next highest targeted religious group is a group is our Muslims, which represent 4% of religious bias crimes. So you can see what an incredible issue this is becoming. In fact, when we talk to American Jews, 82% of them believe anti-Semitism has increased over the past five years, and they're worried. There is a bit of a disconnect with the general public, which less than half of the general public sees anti-Semitism as rising. So one of the reasons we're speaking to elected officials such as you is to get the word out and let people know this really is a distinct problem. And it's impacting the lives of our American Jews. 40% of American Jews tell us that they've changed their behavior at least once over the last 12 months because of fear of anti-Semitism. I was a congregational rabbi in New Jersey before I um, came to this position. And I took great joy in seeing my, my sanctuary filled with people in prayer. One of the things we heard people report is they were scared to go to their synagogue to pray because they were fearful of, uh, that they might be um, attacked in their own house of worship. Think of how horrific that is, that someone can't simply go to connect with God and connect with their fellow people for fear of their safety. Synagogues across New Jersey have added security guards, have added new locks, have added um, all forms of surveillance to keep themselves protected. Um, we're very blessed in Hunterdon County, the Hunterdon County Sheriff actually is patrolling houses of worship to make sure people feel safe. That's not true everywhere. Um, that's a blessing in this area. Let me give you my one, my one story that really says it all in a nutshell. My assistant director, Dina Tubowski, who's here with me, she and I teach groups of teen, Jewish teenagers about leadership. And we ask them this question, have you ever hidden your Judaism for fear of your safety? And these were all juniors and seniors. One of them was a senior in high school who lived in Monmouth, but went to school in Princeton at a private school. So he drove back and forth to school on the highway every day. And he said, and he was an Orthodox Jew who always wore a kippah, always kept his head covered with a yarmulke. He said, Rabbi, you know, when I'm driving, I take my kippah off and I put it in the, in the glove compartment. I said, why do you do that? He said, I'm worried if 
my car breaks down and I'm stuck on the side of the road and someone comes to help me. I don't know how they feel about Jews. That a, that a 17 year old could be worried that if his car breaks down, he'd have to worry who might stop, what they might do to him. That just, that just finds that chilling. We could go to the next. So why is this happening now? Why this great rise? One of the main places we know is because of social media and the internet. And we've all been talking a lot about dangerous algorithms. We have some of our, our politicians are working on um, creating laws that will make social media responsible for those algorithms. But if someone clicks on something that's anti-Semitic, the algorithms will keep feeding them that. If they click on something that's hateful towards Blacks, towards gays, towards Muslims, towards anyone, the algorithm will keep feeding them. So that's been a problem. Deepening polarization in our community, and we've all seen that. Um, a rise in conspiracy theories like QAnon. Um, and we know the impact that that's had on communities. It's also had on this. There's a fading confidence in government and liberal democracies. And again, this is something we've all been dealing with. Extremism's become mainstream. You know, extremism has become mainstream. Things that 10 years ago wouldn't be allowed in, in public, wouldn't be acceptable in public, is now speech that's fully acceptable in public. You know, there's been a breaking of those, of those borders. Uh, the Holocaust is retreating into distant memory. When the, the memory of the Holocaust was fresh, people understood viscerally what anti-Semitism could lead to. But now the uh, generation of the Holocaust is passing away and the memory is fading. My father was a Holocaust survivor. He passed away five years ago. The people who could tell the stories directly are, are leaving us, sadly. There's an increased emphasis in our, in our society on race and identity politics, and that increases some of this polarization we're so worried about. And there's been a weaponization of the, of the Israel-Palestinian conflict where it's turned from simply talking about the conflict to blaming Jews, and that's caused a rise. And then COVID-19, which we've all dealt with the impact of COVID-19. One of them is a rise in people in conspiracy theories, including those that blame Jews for COVID-19 and say that the reason it exists is because of some Jewish conspiracy. So what is anti-Semitism? We have this very simple, definition that you see here, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition, that simply speaks of anti-Semitism as a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism are directed towards Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property, towards Jewish community institutions and religious facilities. Simple, short paragraph. What's powerful about this definition, and we've shared with you through email, um, I think, Sally, we emailed you um, some other documents that you yeah, can share with yeah. everyone. There is two or three pages of examples, and the examples are what are helpful to schools, to law enforcement, to government officials at identifying anti-Semitism. If somebody says X happened, and I think it was anti-Semitic, you could look to this definition and say, does it fit within one of those examples? Um, this was created by an international group. It has been adopted by 33 countries, by the um, State Department, by the Department of Education for use on college campuses, and um, for those of you who are into sports, by the Premier League of English Football. Um, when they had an issue, they adopted this. Uh, we have had a number of towns pass resolutions adopting this definition as their definition. We would love to see Flemington be the next of those. The New Jersey State League of Municipalities also passed a resolution adopting this. So we'd love to have you join that crew of, uh, of I believe about 12 municipalities plus the New Jersey State League of Municipalities in adopting uh, this definition. We did email you a sample resolution that people have been using as a uh, basis for writing their own resolutions unique to each town. Uh, we also see anti-Semitism, and you'll see it's mentioned here, as being a conspiracy theory, as I, as I mentioned earlier. And that's where it's been really toxic and people use it as part of conspiracies. Just to give you a sense of contemporary anti-Semitism, um, 
And you know, you'll see these pictures from Charlottesville. Um, again, a moment that was deeply imbued in racism and yet expressed as anti-Semitism as well. So how we see anti-Semitism today, the usual hatred towards Jews that we know historically, including, including using Nazi swastikas and other kinds of graffiti. <coughs> we have stereotypes and scapegoating, stereotypes like Jews control this or Jews control that, and it's all their fault because uh, of a conspiracy of control or Jews are hungry for money, um, those kinds of stereotypes. We have Holocaust denial, which has grown and grown and grown, even though New Jersey is one of the, was one of the earliest states to mandate Holocaust education. We're still having people in our own state who use Holocaust denial as a form of anti-Semitism, saying Jews just made up the Holocaust so they could get X, Y, or Z. That often is connected to inappropriately invoking Israel. What will happen is people will say Jews made up the Holocaust so they could get Israel. That's a typical tie between the two. That is pure anti-Semitism and pure conspiracy theory. But also let me share with you one that this past May, some of our school children reported to us. We had children going to school, high school children going to school and being accused by classmates of having blood on their hands and being baby killers because of what was happening in the Middle East and because social media was teaching their peers that somehow Jews were killing babies in the Middle East, which wasn't at all, of course, not at all true. But imagine being an 11th grader going into school one day, running into a peer who you think is a friend who starts accusing you of being a baby killer and having blood on your hands because you're a Jew. And this was, we were getting those real reports. So why are we here speaking to you today? And I, I, I wanna, you know, I'm being, um, you'll forgive me for going quickly because I know you, you have limited time. One, as officially, as our elected representatives in this community, you're really our key partners in making things happen. We have come to realize that it's the local municipal leaders who really make a difference in this. It used to be that a lot of my work was with congressmen and senators, and we've, we've come full circle and saying, you know what, we need to be working on a local level. We need to be working with mayors and council members because it's in the community where we make a difference, where we make a change. You're the trusted voices in this community, and anti-Semitism affects people in your community and online and around the world, but really right here in the community. I've been working with the 100 County Prosecutor and with One Voice, which is an organization I know you're familiar with, along with the sheriff. I just met with a group of them to talk about fighting hate in our community. It's a real issue. And identifying that issue is important. You have the platform to be able to combat misinformation, to be able to share the resources that are available to anybody in this community. This community has great resources. Not everybody knows. And you are the ones who have the working relationships with local law enforcement when it comes to dealing with incidents of hate. So what, we, what we're here to ask for, um, and we'll go to the next um, slide. Sorry. <laughs> um, here's what you can do. First and foremost, speak out loudly and clearly against all forms of anti-Semitism. When you know of something, when you hear of something, you have um, a couple of wonderful congregations right here in town, knowing that their leaders are here to speak out on their behalf and to stand with them makes all the difference in the world. Secondly, we'd love to see you adopt the IHRA definition through a resolution. And as I said, we've given you a sample resolution that you can use as a basis for writing your own resolution. But we'd love to have you join with other municipalities in Adopting that definition as a way of saying to the Jewish community and the community at large, this is an issue that we stand with the Jewish community on. Third, the, both the state and federal government have grants for security for houses of worship, not just Jewish houses of worship, for all houses of worship. In fact, Congress recently increased the amount of money available for these security grants. <clears throat> excuse me, we would 
like to, to share with you that we're a resource for helping your houses of worship get those um, security grants. Um, we need people like you to say to the houses of worship, there are these grants available that can protect your people and make you feel secure while they're worshiping. And we're happy to help in making those connections to OHSP and DHS and make sure that people take advantage of these grants. Often we're leaving money on the table because they don't know about it. Um, we hope you'll empower your, your leaders within town to create coalitions. Your ministerium and other interfaith groups, groups like One Voice, are really powerful groups for making a difference in the community. And to have you call on them to be part of this coalition and be part of speaking out. And finally, media literacy is really important. Raising awareness about what's happening in social media and how it's impacting our community is important. We will, um, if we haven't already, we will share with you a link to our Translate Hate document that we created. It outlines online, meme, online anti Semitic memes, what they are, why they're anti Semitic, and what the history is behind them. So that when someone comes to you and says, yeah, I'm not sure this happened, is this anti-Semitic? You can go to Translate Hate, our online glossary, and find right there. Um, is it? Isn't it? And how? Also know that I am always available to you as a resource on, on those levels of fighting hate and understanding anti-Semitism. Um, and with that, I'm glad to take any questions, but I, I thank you for your time and I thank you for your interest. Um, I guess you can stop sharing the screen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that, Rabbi. Um, as I sit here, I'm kind of gobsmacked. I think maybe it's on my job before a couple of times. And, uh, that's concerning. I think I'm a pretty astute, aware person. But to hear it from you, coming that this is happening is obviously concerning. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, I'm sorry that we don't have the resolution on the agenda tonight. We'll put it on for the next meeting, and we'll we appreciate and that. we'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting well, as well. And uh, I thank you for your time, and I'm sure others have some questions as well. So I want to have a bad habit. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I don't have any. <clears throat> I don't have particular questions, but. You know, as I'll agree with Betsy here that, you know, it's, you use the word sober and I mean, it really is. Um, it's a small little world. So my real job is I'm a high school teacher and uh, over at 100 Central, and okay. part of our social studies curriculum has a Holocaust class from Delaware. And, and our students have a chance to experience that and they leave wiser. Um, I know that just being in the trenches, you mentioned the media literacy, that's huge. It's a, it's a problem, you know, that it's, and it's not just kids, <laughs> it's adults. And yes. there, everything happens so quickly with social media and, and to process it, some things can slip in. Um, I, anti-Semitism as a conspiracy, conspiracy theory makes sense to me. It's very old, it's very old conspiracy. Um, and it's, and, and how and when in any way that we can help in any small way or small little town, you know, I, I'm all for it and, and we'll, we'll make it work, make it happen. I, I will tell you, we, um, as I said, I mentioned we have been meeting with the American County Prosecutor. One of the people we met with was the superintendent of schools. Okay. Um, and he really um, embraced the idea that we need to do more in the schools. Mm -hmm. um, so it's wonderful. I, I was a former teacher too. So okay, cool. educator to educator, I love hearing more. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any of our folks are online? I don't have a specific question, but I just want to I want to thank you as well for coming this evening and. Um, I, I appreciate what you had to say and absolutely support um, trying to stop uh, hatred in, in all forms. So thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, I like to echo what Liz said. Um, I can relate, I deeply understand. Thank you. So what, so what I would say is that um, 
you know, hatred in any form, whether it's by religion or race or creed or sexuality or whatever the case may be, is intolerable, right? And I think that at, at the end of the day, I mean, this, this, this is just another layer of what we have to deal with, whether it's in Hunterdon County or outside of Hunterdon County. And I think that um, like bringing this, this to the forefront and coupling that with other hatred and, and having a form to say that this is not gonna to be tolerated, whether it's a resolution with anti-Semitism uh, or um, African-American or whatever the case may be, I just think the resolution needs to spread wider, right? And I think it needs to be very, very inclusive. So this is not something I actually thought about, but this is something certainly that should be um, that should be at the forefront as well. Tony, I, I would. Um, the interesting thing here is um, I'm, I'm going to agree with you and say a yes and, which is um, the yes and that we would hope for is certainly. Um, Hunterdon County standing up against all kinds of hatreds. As I said, often anti-Semitism is the template. It's where it starts and it spreads elsewhere. I mean, we saw that in Buffalo. I happen to be um, born and raised in Buffalo, so that wouldn't hit me, really. So I will tell you, when the shooting happened in Buffalo, uh, my brother had two employees that lived in the neighborhood near where the top supermarket is, and I called him right away to say, are they okay? And I've never had that moment before in my own life where I was asking if people I knew directly were okay, and they were. Um, I don't want to say thank God because there were 10 others who weren't, um, but they were, and it, it kind of hit personally. So uh, I'll agree with you, there's, there's a real place for this, but anti-Semitism is such a unique hatred that adopting this definition separately uh, I, as, a, as a separate resolution is very important because Anti-Semitism is widely misunderstood. People understand the idea of hatred of Jews, but they don't understand all of these little extras that come, the idea of conspiracy and the idea of um, the Holocaust denial and all of that that's very unique to that. So um, I would kind of like to um, offer to all of you that there's a yes and here, which is the yes, speak out against all forms of hatred, uh, but and adopting this definition makes it will make a huge difference and, and we'll add to our work. Yeah. And, and we'll put it on the agenda for the next week. Thank you. We'll do and, if, and how do you fight it though when it comes off and from the highest levels of government? We're seeing it right now. I'm not gonna mention any names. I don't need we've to. seen it from the left and the right. I it's not it's, we are by the way we are a fully nonpartisan group. We are radically nonpartisan. My CEO um, lives and dies by that word. Um, but we're seeing it on the left and we're seeing it on the right. So you're not even being political by saying that. Um, a lot of it's speaking out and we do not hesitate to speak out no matter who we have. We have spoken out against people on both sides of the aisle for when they cross the line into anti-Semitism. Uh, and unfortunately we've seen a lot of it over the last number of years. Um, so that's number one. Number two is engaging really good faith folk like you who are also elected officials and having people speaking in positive ways and speaking about, uh, you know, um, as Council Member Parker just said, speaking about all kinds of things and not letting any one kind um, stand. There is no good place for any kind of hate. Uh, and then the other thing is, and I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say to my fellow teacher, what we're doing with our youth in schools. And I think we fell away from it for a while and we're getting back to realizing that we need to teach them about what it means to be a good member of civic society. You know? And I think that's key. Knowing that we each have each other's backs, that we don't, turn to the black community to be the only ones who speak out about racism. We don't turn to the LGBT community to be the only ones to speak out about gay hatred. We don't turn to the Muslim community to be the only ones speaking out about Islamophobia. We don't turn to the Jewish community to be the only ones speaking out about anti-Semitism. We all speak out for each other. And that's what 
That's what built our society. We lost a little of that and we need to recapture that. And that's this work. That's why we're here. And that's why I'm so pleased that you all are so welcoming to, to our words. Thank you for coming. Like Thank I said, we'll, we'll get that on the agenda the next meeting. Thank you for two having weeks. us. I think it's two weeks. The next yeah, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all, and thank you thank for you. taking the time to listen. Thank you. It was a pleasure to meet you. It was wonderful to meet all of you. Like you get to the other work of the town. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Today is June 7th. This is the Mayor and Common Council Borough of Flemington regular meeting. We did have um, an executive session earlier regarding a potential uh, land acquisition and negotiations therein regarding that. No action will be taken on that this evening. We also had a work session. We had Rabbit, Rabbi David Levy, who's the director of uh, the New Jersey Regional American Jewish Committee. We had uh, Dina Dabowski, who was here as well, and Jonathan Nemeth, all from the AJC, talking about a rise in anti Semitism. Uh, this meeting is being held in conformance with the OPMA, it's held pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Law, meeting of June 27, 2022, including the list of meetings notice. Uh, sent to the Huntington County Democrat Courier News on January 5th, 2022, posted on the Bulletin of the Board of Borough Hall on that day, and has remained continuously posted as required. In addition, a copy of this notice is and has been available to the public and is on file in the Office of the Borough Clerk. Meetings are still continuing to be held in a hybrid fashion, uh, so some of us are here, some of us are not here. Uh, just Council Person Just End was... Uh, uh, remote a few minutes ago. She is on her way in. She'll be here in person in a couple of minutes as well. And uh, we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all. Thank you. Kelly, we take the roll. Mayor Driver, here. Ms. Hand is on her way in. Um, Mr. Johnston? Here. Mr. Long? Here. Mr. Parker? Here. Ms. Rosetti? Here. Ms. Tilly? Here. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Moving on, uh, I have a short report. As I mentioned at the very top, we did have an executive session. No action will be taken. Work session. I'd like to thank the representatives from the AJC who came to talk about a rather sobering and disturbing rise in anti Semitism around our country and community. And uh, Council will be taking some action on that at the next meeting as well. Uh, I attended the Pride event on Stangle Road on Friday evening, thanks to the uh, FCP for uh, putting that together. It was a great turnout. Given that it's a relatively new event in town every uh, every year, it's a little bit bigger, and I look forward to maybe someday we'll be able to actually have a parade or something. Maybe we'll have enough people for that. That would be exciting. Uh, this past Thursday, I helped cut the ribbon over at the new home for Viva Mexico. It's a great addition to Main Street. Seeing them move from tenant to owner reflects their confidence in the plumbing community continuing to move forward. After the ribbon cutting, I headed over to Riffis for the police community night. Again, another great turnout. The weather was just fabulous. And there were fun and games for all. Uh, one particular officer in the dunk tank. Uh, in, 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 those kids throwing those, uh, taking those shots at that dunk tank. But frankly, they were 
pretty good shot. I don't think they had any help though from the police explorers in making Officer Lou a little bit wet before the end of the night. I think that that was just a, a I, I think I imagined that. I think so. The borough departments that participated, uh, Rebecca Newman was there doing some face painting. All the officers were out and to the department for putting this together. It's a really great thing that they've started to do in the last uh, two years. On th Tuesday, the 21st, myself, the water sort utilities, the proprietor for the uh, coming soon, Millie's Brunch and Ed at 144 Main Street. Millie's has submitted site plans for the site of the old gas station. That completeness hearing will be held tomorrow at Planning Board. On the 23rd, I had a meeting with our tax assessors to review some tax exempt properties that no longer appear to be meeting their tax exemption requirements by as they sit empty and underutilized. Tax exempt properties for those who need to know need to be functioning in the purpose they obtained the tax exemption for. Property can't be held indefinitely off the tax rolls if it's sitting vacant. And additionally, and I have asked the tax assessor to uh, review those. Additionally, we have a couple of properties around the borough that have tax exemption that appear to be used also for not for for profit purposes. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, maybe something will come, maybe something won't, but you know, if we can get one or two properties that shouldn't be on the tax exempt rolls back on, that'd be a good thing. I'd like to remind everybody that between the county and nonprofits, we have nearly $67 million worth of tax exempt rateables in this borough. It's a lot of property. It's a lot of it's being held by the county. Uh, some of that property being held by the county is not being used for its uh, intended purpose. And so Ed Kerwin will be reviewing all of those lists and uh, coming back to us at some point. On the 16th, I participated in the walk on it, which is uh, conducted by the FCP in conjunction with Go Hunt Gym. On the 15th, I went to the grand opening of the Chambers Unity Bank Center in the annex behind the uh, large mansion there to create space. They did a beautiful job with it and it will serve our business community well. Uh, if you've been driving around the Union Hotel, you'll notice that there is foundational work starting to go in, a big hole starting to be dug in the ground. Uh, the hotel building, if you look carefully, you'll see that there's uh, some additional structural bracing that's being inserted as part of the overall plan as well going in there. So what they're doing is just sticking big steel beams in there as they start to work around it. I um, want to remind everybody, we do have fireworks uh, returning to the borough for the first time in three years, July 3rd. Uh, I looked at the weather a short while ago. It's not looking great, but it is a long way out. So as we all know, weather forecasts can change. Uh, if it is raining and if the uh, decision is made to call it, uh, there'll be a rain day on July 5th as well. I want to just give a shout out as well to Mark Payne, who is single-handedly puts this together every year. Uh, previously, it was part of the Parks and Rec uh, when we kind of spun off and went into an MOU to kind of change Parks and Rec and our shared services. Mark uh, did agree to stay on and do those fireworks. He does a great job with it, and I do want to thank him for that as well. He's down dealing today with the porta potties for everybody, so that you know we have places for all the kids to do their business at while they're waiting for the fireworks to begin. Also, uh, as you know, we did uh, traffic studies that we approved a few weeks ago are still underway, and those are going to be coming up. We'll see those reports hopefully soon. And I want to give a shout out and congratulations to Sally Graziana, who became a grandma <laughs> for the second time since we saw you last. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, I know that you'll be looking forward to having lots of time with those grandchildren yeah. coming up soon upon your retirement as well. Um, that's all I have for my comments. We'll begin to my left with the uh, Council Vice President Jessica Tan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I've been working with Habitat for Humanity to gather fencing materials and volunteers for the community garden and still waiting the paperwork for the incorporation of the community garden. Uh, waiting is not easy for me, but the community garden will happen. Um, yeah. It always takes longer than you think it will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are still looking for members for the Environmental Commission. Please email me at jesshannahhistoricflemington.com. On Friday, I attended Pride Night, uh, which is a very, very important event to me and my family. I want to thank Robin and the SCP for putting it on. Uh, thank you to Toby Cherneski and other performers. I'm blown away by the talent of the youth today and their ability to express themselves. Being so out and open is not something that would have happened when I was a teenager millions of years ago. Uh, while there are so ways to go, I'm grateful for the progress we've achieved. 
Thank you. Uh, we're going to go online. Let's go up to uh, Councilman Parker. Yes, good um, Good evening, everyone. So I don't have a lot to report, um, anything to report specifically, but I did attend the Juneteenth um, event in Montgomery Township. And I think that this is what's important about this is that there actually is an African-American museum that they're building in Montgomery Township. Um, and I really think that Flemington needs to, one of the things we might wanna consider is a, June ter a Juneteenth event next year. And we do have some history um, that Mayor Driver shared with me of, um, of Little Jim, a story that um, is pretty sobering. And um, we might just wanna take a look at that um, and maybe even join forces with Montgomery Township on the African-American um, Museum, which I think is gonna, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal story. Um, and it's actually about the Sourland Mountains and the Strasburg Mountains where they were actually, um, not only slaves, but there were a lot of African Americans that lived in that and a lot of history there. So, and there's also an underground railroad that is part of, of that as well. So I would encourage us to take kind of a look at that for next year um, and see how we can get involved with that and expand that over into, um, into Flemington. Um, that's it for me. Okay. And uh, next up, and thank you, um, Tony and I were also uh, lucky enough to go to the Governor's Pride event as well last week, and that was a great time as well. And, uh, Absolutely. I hope you yep. enjoyed yourself as much as I did. No, it, it was it was a great event. It's a great experience, a great event, and I got to meet a lot of other um, people from other municipalities, which I think, um, you know, the more synergy you get, the better off you are at this point, right? Great. Okay. And next step is uh, Councilman Malik Johnson. All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, I have nothing to report this week, thank you. Okay, thank you. Next up online is uh, Council uh, Kirsten Elizabeth Rossetti. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I had a conversation with Dave Giuliani earlier today, just checking in on uh, code, codes and zoning enforcements. Everything is going well. He's been handling uh, a variety of things, uh, pest issues, overgrown grass, gutters on houses. Um, sidewalk issues. Um, so I just want to give a shout out to him. Thank you very much for all his work. He's been chasing down <laughs> everything around town, um, but nothing major. Everything has been moving along smoothly. Um, I also would like to say, um, as, as some of you know, due to health reasons, we're still pretty uh, low key in my family, but I did enjoy from a distance the po uh, police community night. We had fun watching the helicopter fly over our house that evening um, and land in the field. Um, in addition, I just wanted to mention um, Flemington Borough Library. They're our summer reading program has started today. So Nora is very excited to be doing that. Uh, their theme, Oceans of Wonder. Um, just a reminder for everyone in town, it's a great program. So thank you. Excellent. Uh, next up, we'll go to my right, Council President Jeremy Long. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, a few things here. Police, uh, again, just as everyone, as others have mentioned, police community was a great success. Uh, the rain went away earlier in the day and ended up being a very well attended event. Thanks to our borough police department and the various vendors, the rescue squad, DPW fire department for providing their support. Uh, police department would like residents to remember that with the 4th of July holiday coming up, projectile fireworks and rockets, that's anything that flies in the air, are not permitted in the borough. This presents an obvious fire hazard. Uh, ground fireworks are fine, but you cannot shoot rockets into the air. Officers will be patrolling and we'll be on the lookout for such projectiles. So please everyone be safe. Um, FCP, last week I attended the uh, annual stakeholder event at Stangle Factory. Uh, many of our business owners were in attendance and there were some great presentations by Hunter County Director of Economic Development and Tourism, Mark Salix, Susan Schmidt of the Suasion, Suasion Marketing Agency, um, Jamie the Storefront Guy of Storefront Masonry, and George Vallone of Hoboken Brownstone. It was an exciting and inspiring event. Special thanks to the SCP's Executive Director, Rhonda Lapinas, and the SCP President, David Johnson, for their work in setting the stage for Wednesday's meeting. This work's integral, meaningful, and will pay dividends that will be felt for years to come. And again, it was a truly awesome night. I also, uh, with the mayor, attended the uh, ribbon cutting ceremony. So congratulations to Viva Mexico again for their move. And they've been looking like they're, they're pretty busy. Um, 
We've had uh, great events in the, this past week, as has been mentioned. We had the Pride Dance Party at Stangle, uh, twice the crowd, uh, uh, crowd increase, increase from the last time. Flemington Fresh Talent, composed of local 100 and Central High School performers led by Toby Cherneski, put on an incredible show. Stangle Road had, was packed with audiences for that event. The comedy show at Lone Eagle, the B Street Band at Stangle, and the very first Within Spirit Flemington Ghost Tour kickoff event. And that ghost tour will operate on Fridays, leaving from the Within Spirit um, store, and it's slated to be a big hit. FCP stakeholders meeting, as I mentioned, uh, featured 70 local business uh, and property owners. FCP is releasing a video this week of the meeting in addition to the new Curb to Cornice Storefront Improvement Grant. It was a great meeting with information about the new Hunter County Tourism Media Campaign, um, an introduction to the uh, media company, as I mentioned, and, and uh, the storefront design. This week, on Thursday, the FCP is sponsoring Queen for a Night on Main Street. The street will be closed between William and Mine Street. All are welcome. It's a great opportunity to learn more about our local businesses and, and to enter to become the queen for the night and win a basket worth $3,000 with uh, a bunch of goodies in it. Planning, uh, we had a planning meeting this morning, um, myself and David Johnston and, and uh, Executive Lapidus and Ryan and the chief to talk corn, tomato and beer. That's gonna be on Saturday, August 13th. It's an exciting event, guaranteed to please. You're gonna have a lot of people. So planning is there. And uh, we're very much excited for this to happen. Um, and that's my report for this. Excellent. Next up, Councilwoman Cantilli. <clears throat> so as everyone mentioned, fireworks, hopefully we will be holding those on Sunday, July 3rd. The show starts at 9.15 at the Reading Plumbing Intermediate School. The show should last 30 to 45 minutes, judging on past shows. Please do not show up at the Intermediate School until 6.30. Emergency vehicles, we are having a DJ, and Rita's Ice will be getting on site at 6. And um, please bring plenty of fluids with you. Uh, a very special thank you to Mark Hain for organizing this event all by himself. It's greatly appreciated. And then as fire commissioner, I'm organizing a water bottle drive to benefit the fire department. So starting this Friday, July 1st, for the whole month, that goes until July 31st. If you're able to, please donate a case of bottled water. Cases can be dropped off here at Borough Hall. And I pledge to match the first 100 cases donated. If you have any questions, please contact me at Kate Tilly at historicflutterington.com. Thank you. Just remember to pick up some water. Next time I go to that big box store around the corner. Um, that takes us to our first public comment session. If you are a member of the public and would like to speak, you can raise your hand. I don't see anybody on the phone, so you can uh, click the raise hand icon. We do have one member in the audience. I suspect he has nothing to say. And a presumptuous of me. For those who don't know, uh, our incoming uh, borough clerk and uh, clerk administrator, Michael Humphrey, is here. That's why I'm just giving a little shout out. So, already. I'm not seeing any hands go up, so let's go ahead and move on to uh, approve some minutes. We're going to have a motion to approve the minutes of the June 13th regular council meeting. Julia, move. Handle second. All right, uh, Ms. Hand? Yes, Dean. Um, okay, Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. Okay, that's approved. Okay, next up is a motion to approve the uh, June 13th executive session minutes. Tilly, we'll handle second. All right, Ms. Hand? Same. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? I have to abstain. I didn't attend it. <laughs> yeah. 
Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. Ready? Approved. We do not have a consent agenda this evening because everything on the agenda is of vital importance that we want to discuss. Uh, first up is item number one, ordinance 2022-8. This is the first reading ordinance amending section 1404 of the borough code regarding the historic preservation commission. Tilly will move. Campbell second. Um, this is the first reading, but Kim, can you give us the uh, cliff notes version as to what it is? Uh, the HPC needed to revise our ordinance uh, to become certified local government. That gives us the opportunity to apply for grant monies, and it does make the HPC a, a little stronger HPC. Uh, we have worked out all the details with the uh, planning board when this was first uh, proposed in February, so we're back on the board on the That's agenda. Legit. Was it only February? Yeah. Seems like a lot longer than that. Uh, Sally, if you call, but any other comments, questions? Shall we go ahead and call the vote? Ms. Ms. Hand? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. Okay, that is introduced. The public hearing will be at the July 11th council meeting. Excellent, thank you. Uh, next up, another first reading. Ordinance 22 9, this is the first reading and ordinance authorizing agreement for the acquisition of leasehold interest and non exclusive ground lease agreement between the borough of Flemington and 307L Flemington Land Holdings LLC. This is the property known as Block 44, Lot 6 in the borough of Flemington. If we could have a motion. Tilly, I'll move. And a second. Tara, I'm looking to you yes. to give us the rundown as to what this is. Uh, this is for the um, living wall and uh, circle sign. Um, that's the Flemington circle sign. This is a DOT requirement because the borough is given, um, I believe it's eight seconds every minute or some. And that's also the sign. It says yes. historic borough. Uh, we're given time on the digital advertising as well as the, um, you know, the borough seal will be displayed on the wall. Um, DOT requires the borough to have some sort of interest in the property or else it's considered off-premises advertising. And that involves a very expensive public hearing process, et cetera. This is uh, allowing us to effectuate the intent of the planning board's resolution of approval, which is that the, the borough would get um, essentially free space to uh, put you know, emergency uh, notifications, et cetera, uh, on that sign. And just for the record, you know, the township also has one of these signs coming up built by the same company, Catalyst Experiential, and this up is, at 202 South and Ridge Road. And I was at their meeting last week, and same thing, they had to do the same thing. Yeah, and this is pretty standard. I looked it up. There's a lot of municipalities that do this and have almost an identical lease agreement mm -hmm. and, and resolution. It's like it. one square foot will be us, right? With, and no money is exchanged no, from no us. No money is being exchanged. Um, there are in the- Other than them paying their taxes to yes. us. And in the lease agreement, there is you know, full full releases of the borough. There is no intent that the, the borough you know, is really taking any responsibility for this property. Uh, just for the record as well, so shortly after that sign was approved, I was down in Trenton and met with the DOT and representatives from the company building it. And, um, and I thought it was all cleared away. And boy, I tried to follow up on it to figure out what the outcome of that was. And that kind of was like crawling into a rabbit hole. And that's why it's fine to just go forward on this. So any other questions or comments for this on the first reading? Tell it, go ahead and call the vote. Ms. Hand? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rosetti? Yes. Ms. Dilley? Yes. All right, that's been introduced and the public hearing will also be on July 11th. Excellent. 
Um, next step is resolution 2022-150 urging the swift pa passage of Senate Bill S-330, which restores energy tax receipts. Really uh, it's, sorry. Okay, that's okay. You can go ahead and move in and then I'll talk a little bit more. Long story. So basically, uh, there is a, during the state right now is in its budget process, and there's been a real move every year during the budget process by municipalities to try and claw back the energy tax receipts, which were more or less taken away from the uh, municipalities 20 years ago. Uh, a long time ago, the borough, or the municipalities would collect these energy tax receipts for gas and electric bills. You've seen the taxes on your things. And, uh, and that was money that was available for the municipality. 20 years ago or so, the state decided that it was going to start collecting the energy tax receipts. Much like we collect, like we're the collection agency for school board taxes. However, when the state started taking the energy tax receipts, they then decided they didn't want to submit that money back to the municipalities. It would almost be like if we collect the school taxes and then said, oh, sorry, sorry, Flemington or Everton, you know, we need a little bit more money to budget, to balance our budget. So therefore, we're not going to send you all that money. You can't do that. But that's what is, is exactly what happened on the energy tax receipts. So I had Bill actually work up some numbers as to how much this borough has lost over 20 years by the state not sending its energy tax receipts to us. And this is every municipality, not just us. Our number is probably pretty low because we don't have a huge population. It's $5.7 million that has not been submitted to this municipality by the state of New Jersey when they decided to not send energy tax receipts. So this is a resolution and it's being adopted by many municipalities. It has been over the last week or two. I think Clinton did one a week or two ago to ask our state assembly members to please give that money back. That money would really do a lot. It would lower taxes. It's money that you know rightfully belongs to the municipalities and frankly, we want it back. The state is going around mentioning that they have a lot of money. They have quite a surplus. It's time to share it more properly and give us those receipts back. So that's that $5.7 million. That's what you're voting for, guys. <laughs> so this is backdated, right? Or, or no? That goes back through um, 20 years. So the numbers, if, if we get it back, would be based upon 2007. It's a whole very long, complicated formula. I think the website is energytaxreceipts.org if you want to go on and read more about it. Time is of the essence, though. Um, if this is going to happen, it's going to happen this week. So, and uh, that's why we need to do this this evening. Um, New Jersey League of Municipalities also has a lot of stuff as well. That you can read more if you want. Any questions, comments? So we want to get that 5.7. Okay, that's what, yeah. Okay. I just realized that's what you were asking. Okay. No, we want to get it, but it would resume. Okay. So would start further now. collections yeah. okay. and come back to us though. Gotcha. All right, well, we can drink. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, it, it might. Um, and I don't know, there was I know, some budget hearings today, but I did not have time to actually check it out before coming in today. Anyways, uh, this is just to let our state assembly members know that we uh, want that money back. Ms. Uh, Hand? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Law? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rosetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. All right, that's approved. Um, next up is resolution, no, resolution 2022-151. And Sally, that should go to all of our state legislatures. I'll sign yeah, I have a it. list of okay, them great. that it should go to. Yeah, it's in the resolution. Okay, itself. perfect. Um, next up is resolution 2022-151, authorizing submission of DFT grant for North Main Street Improvement Project. It's that time of the year again where the State DOT Transportation Trust Fund opens up the grant process. And uh, we submitted for North Main Street between uh, Walter Paran up to the uh, border. 
last year we didn't get it. We are submitting again for that street as well, particularly further up close to the border. It's, it's really in bad shape. Um, people have asked me, how do we choose our streets to uh, get done? Uh, basically, we, we not only look at the pavement above the street, but we look at the infrastructure underneath as well and the condition of the infrastructure underneath. And that is uh, an area which needs some improvement of that water and sewer infrastructure. Uh, kind of a motion. Tilly, I'll move. Hold a second. Any other comments? Tilly, go ahead and call the. Uh... Oh. Ms. Hand? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. All righty, that's approved. Good. Next up is resolution 2022-152, authorizing an arrangement with Lebanon Borough regarding street sweeping. We have a motion. Tilly will move. And I'll second. So we periodically here in the borough do rent out uh, the street sweeper and uh, the personnel to run it to uh, some of the smaller towns around when they need their streets swept. Lebanon uh, wants to sweep up before their fabulous 4th of July uh, parade. We are there to serve them. We do get paid $200 an hour, which covers uh, door to door, basically from the moment they leave the bar to the moment they return and covers all labor, vehicle and fuel costs. Uh, we've done French town in the past as well. Uh, if we could have uh, um, a vote. A vote. <laughs> John still will move. Well, it's already been moved by Kim and, oh. so, and by Jess. So we're just, just going to vote on it now. <laughs> Ms. Hand? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. All right, that's approved. So Next up is resolution 2022-153, authorizing application for a rediscover hunting grant for support the uh, presentation of fireworks in the borough of Flemington. If we could have a motion. So they'll move. One second. Okay, so the county has a little grant fund to uh, get people back to events and uh, this just is for the fireworks. $5,000. Yeah. Um, you call the votes? Ms. Hand? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Law? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rosetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. All right, that's approved. Yeah, next up is resolution 2022-154, authorizing change order number six on the existing water tank and improvements project. This change order was for a total of $135,446.41. Tilly, I'll move. Yeah, I'll start. Yeah. So, um, this is just as we were building stuff, there's a bunch of stuff that then needed to be done to finish the project as well, including cell phone stuff, gates, towers, poles, and this hopefully will be a, to get the stuff finished up. Yeah, I'm in the right place. Could uh, Sally call the vote? Okay, Ms. Hand? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rosetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. All right, that's approved. Uh, next up is resolution 2022-155, granting approval to submit a grant application and execute a grant agreement with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the Main Street and Church Street Improvement Project. If we could have a motion. Tilly, I'll move. Call the vote. Sure, I'll move. Um, Ms. Hand? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. All right, that's approved. That brings us to our second public comment session. If there's a member of the public that would like to make a comment, you can raise your hand using the raise hand icon. Seeing none, we're going to go ahead and move on. And I know that was a short time, but I do see who's here at the meetings. So, um, do you have an attorney's report? Uh, just a short one. Uh, as you can see from the resolution you just approved for the uh, change order on the water tank, uh, work has been proceeding painting that tank. 
Um, you probably also see someone up on top of the tank. <laughs> it's work's been a little bit delayed because of the rainy weather, so the schedule has been pushed back. But they, fingers crossed, that we finish by the end of the month, early early July. And so far, everything's been going as smoothly as possible. Um, and thank you, by the way, for handling a lot of that. So <laughs> if you can pass it off to Mr. Humphreys in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Uh, really, I have to say that most of the thanks should go to Mike and Jerry. They really, they were really able to come up with a, a creative solution. Um, I've also been speaking of, of Jerry and Mike. Um, I will also be working with them on the North Main Street Road Improvement Project. I started working on that because there will uh, we will need to get some easements. Um, for the work and possibly if the road is widened a little bit, we'll have to get some right away easements. Uh, it's not going to widen that much, though. No, no, it's, it, it's especially for the trees. Yeah, that are pulling up the sidewalks. Yeah, it's it's a, it, yeah, it's not. And I'll talk to you about yeah, that. Just to get um, just get rights of way easements, so, yeah. which is pretty standard when we do mm -hmm. these projects. If the if the if the rights of way easements aren't already there, and if you haven't done a road improvement project on a road in quite some time, you may not have the standard right of way easement on the, um, on the property. So we're going to be- Was that North Main or Main in church? North. North Main, I North believe, Main. is the North one Main. that requires the easements. I think, sorry. It <laughs> might be an easter or two that has to go back to church in Main, which is why yeah. it's back on here. Yeah, so um, Jerry, for all the plans and the details, and we'll start contacting the property owners. Um, I think that is it, but I'm sure between now and the next meeting, I'll get a couple more assignments. <laughs> okay. Um, Do we have a motion to pay some bills? Tilly, I'll move. Hold on a second. All right, Ms. Hand? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rosetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. All right. Do we have a motion to go into executive session? Do we have any reason to go into executive session? I think we handled everything at the beginning. We have a motion to return. Julia, I'll move. Handle second. See you on the 11th, folks. Have a great 4th of July. We'll see you at the fireworks. Thank you.